on. You know, one of the things that I tell everyone across the country whenever they come to a class is that I'm probably the most brilliant idiot they're ever going to meet in their life. And the reason is, is that no matter what, I can share all of the evidence that we share across the country and uh, people will still go, well, we need another study. We, we want this, we want that. And uh, the point that I want to make with you right here in this video is that most of the studies regarding violence out there in healthcare are wrong. And here's why. They're wrong, and this is the reason why I know it to be fact. Everywhere across the country, as once I've defined what is or isn't a patient, I ask, I say, hey, by a show of hands, raise your hand if you've ever been attacked by a drunk or drugged individual um, who threatened you and then you know, spit on you, tried to kick you, do whatever. But then I contrast that with, you know, what a patient is and how a confused patient is different than a criminal aggressor. And so when I, I define for them what a criminal assault really is, I say, hey, if you've ever had that happen, raise your hand. And we get between 80 and 100% of the room to raise their hand and admit the fact they've been assaulted. Then I say, well, do me a favor, keep your hand up if you turn that in. Well, I get on here and I've shared this in videos before that we get 80 to 100% of the room to admit the fact they've been criminally assaulted, yet only 2 to 3% ever turned it in, ever reported it. So every single study, whether it be by the ENA, the NAEMT, NIOSH, and all these other studies that are out there, are really false because they're greatly underreported. Well, here's the kicker. Uh, I didn't even know I had this until I was reviewing uh, Mr. Perkins' video, but here is an administrator talking about that part that he witnessed himself in the class. So mind you, it can be a room of six people or 600 people, and I found the same thing across the country. It's all relative, 80 to 100%, and uh, only two to 3% have reported it, so check it out. Not my words, here you get an administrator saying what he saw. Um, and like he says in his lecture, and I might give it away for some of the times that he trained, even in one of the classes, you know, I think we had 12 or 14 people there, and the question was, hey, how many of you have ever been assaulted on the job, or had physical contact or a scuffle on the job? And everybody in the room raised their hand because uh, we had some folks in there from, you know, first year to, in my situation, 17 years as a medic, 20 years in the business, and yeah, I've been in those situations. And then he said, okay, leave your hands up. And then all of those that reported it, leave your hands up, the rest you put your down, hands down. And out of those 12 or 14 people, only two people left their hands up that actually reported the incident. And I've been in those situations multiple times and never reported it. Because one of the things that frustrates him, and as an administrator kind of hit home, is we always think it's part of the job, you know. So again, it's not me saying it, it's someone else saying it. And the point is, is that I've seen it now for several years since I've been adding that into part of our presentation. And that it is just a matter of, you know, the culture has said, you know, you just accept it as part of the job and that's just the way that it is. Listen, if grandma scratches you because, uh, you know, she's trying to uh, extubate herself uh, in the middle of a, her, her having a CVA, or the hypoglycemic, or the uh, ammonia levels off in someone, the hypoxic, the hypovolemic, any of those, uh, that's, an, that's an uncooperative patient. That is not a criminal aggressor that we've been calling the words combative patient. And uh, we're trying to get those words, combative patient, removed from our lingo because they are part of the problem. And I can't make you believe that until you, you, you know, really put the program together. Just one piece here, one piece there doesn't make sense. And people sit back like this and go, that's a bunch of bullshit and blah, 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 until they train with us and then they go, holy crap, I had no idea. But it's because we have to spend several hours just chipping away at the culture. And it's not the person sitting in the class that we're wrestling with, it's the culture that's been ingrained in them. So uh, again, I'm probably the most brilliant idiot you're ever gonna meet because while others, you know, tried to get better with trauma or cardiology or, you know, uh, respiratory, I went, oh my gosh, and focused on this one particular subject, which is how do I help providers, these wonderful people, stay safe on the job that they love to do. So if you believe in our message of what we're trying to do here, which is saving yours while you save others, please let others know we exist. Send them to the DT4EMS.com website. Check out some of our stuff, not only on Facebook, but on YouTube, because there's a lot of things that we share out there that are safety related that make sense instantly if you'll just approach it with an open mind, like you did everything else with your job. So I'm Kip Tiso. Till next time, we'll see you soon.